Well, amid elevated interest rates last year, data showed that land sales in the greater Vancouver area fell sharply. And our next guest says that those land sales are a key ingredient in housing development and a drop in land transactions. Well, that's a red flag for development down the line. For more on this, let's bring in Tony Letvinchuk, Managing Director at McDonald Commercial Real Estate Services. Tony, thanks so much for joining us this afternoon. Wonderful. Thanks for having me with you today. I look forward to uh, shedding some light on this uh, recent info. Yeah, this is an interesting land. topic for sure. Um, so when, when we're talking even just about the land sales that you're looking at, can, can you tell us about what kind of land this is? This is, this is residential land that's, that's undeveloped or what would you be considering? Yeah, what happens is there's a number of suppliers that provide this data. Altus Group is one of them in uh, in Canada. And uh, basically what's happened, if you looked at 2023 versus 2022 with respect to residential land sites uh, that are poised for development, there's been a 69% decrease uh, in the sale volume of land. And when you think of it this way, for the development community, land is the uh, basically the main ingredient for getting developments underway. And of course, right now, there's a big push. All the levels of government are behind it to get more residential housing to deal with the many that are coming to the country over the next period of time. So it really means two things. Number one, numbers aren't penciling out for developers to take the risk and go into land deals. And number two, it could mean uh, a decline in expected housing being produced uh, three and four years down the road when the current land purchases re are finally built out through the entitlement process. And Tony, can you just tell us a little bit about your role so we, uh, we understand what sort of perspective you're, you're looking at this uh, through? Of course. Uh, basically, we have a group of uh, brokers at McDonald Commercial that are trying to work with land to make them available for developers. Many times we work with the owners. We might be assembling sites uh, for owners, uh, say on a busy street, um, in order to create retail on the main floor and residential up above. Or we can work uh, in a different context for developers uh, to, try to, to try to buy the land. And we also have another subset of brokers that are very active with income producing property sales. So we're, we're quite active in the market. And often it means sitting at the kitchen table uh, with homeowners or uh, landowners that have held properties for, uh, for many years and are look at, looking at trying to have the uh, opportunity to sell land to a developer mm. um, to see that development takes place. Okay, so that's really interesting. So maybe in like an older neighborhood where there's a, a desire for more density, then maybe there might be some, you might be as you said, at the, the dinner table, chatting it out with some people who um, might be interested in, in selling their uh, their single family residence. So what are right. you seeing right now in terms of um, demand from developers to go do that, to go have those conversations with whomever to try to find, um, you know, the right land for them to develop? Yeah, what happened basically last year is we, we had two or three things that had really an impact, a negative impact on the, the development community going into deals. Number one, you pointed out the increase in interest rates. Now, while interest rates um, in this 4 to 5% range, uh, say, uh, they're, they're low in historic terms, but the problem is they they went from, say, 1% to 4 and 5. So mm -hmm. the absolute increase was huge. That's number one. Number two, there's been a big increase in construction costs um, over the past uh, two and three years. And number three, the entitlement process through uh, municipalities is a challenge um, in many ways. And, uh, so is, and also is the processing time once entitlements are given. So, you know, we just have to work on things that we can control. And um, so that's where it's challenging for developers at the moment. There's still many that are on the sidelines, but looking for deals. We're very active with the development community, but all the factors have to be right in order for them to plunge forward, to take the risk, to buy the property, to get ready for eventual development. It kind of sounds like how um, just your sort of prospective home buyer might be a little bit more more picky these days. It, at the height of the pandemic, people were sort of willing to move out wherever, get whatever sort of uh, home uh, while they could, yeah. and then the, the the momentum shifts a little bit, um, and you're you're you, you stand back a little, and you're a little bit pickier when those those rates are higher. Um, so you, you talked about some of those factors. Um, you know, like the uh, the 
the slowdown through the um, approvals processes and that kind of thing. Um, right. Are there is there reason for optimism on that front? Do you think some of that could be sped up with the, you know, the goal that is to get more housing built? Uh, so, you know, we hear about that so much. So do you think that there are changes that could be made here that would make that easier? Well, I think on, on two levels. Number one, it last year is, is a is really a banner year for the levels of government from the federal, the provincial, and the civic governments, uh, where there was a recognition that there is a supply problem. Uh, the industry has been um, indicating that for the 10 and 15 years, the supply problem issue. At the same time, we need to create and we want to create supply of all types. Uh, in various ways, uh, so that as many people as possible can, you know, get behind and have the opportunity to rent at a reasonable level and to own own prop own a own a home or a residence. In terms of the turnaround at City Hall, I think the one answer there is we can actually do a lot uh, at the municipal level. When there's a will, there's a way, and we have to. The, the industry expects there's going to be a lot of oversight, rules, requirements. It's nothing new. That's not going away, but we have to reduce the processing times. Um, it shouldn't take months, say in the case of Vancouver, to get uh, approval for a laneway house, a small residence at the back of the property for someone to live in. And it's and again, there's always the best intentions. The cities and provinces is, are trying to make things move quicker. It's just that it has to move much more quicker than it ever has. Because in the case of Metro Vancouver, we're going to have a million people on our doorstep in the next 17 or 18 years. So the conveyor belt of folks moving here will not be stopping. And for the benefit of all of us and healthy communities where people can live, work and play, we have to deal with this housing issue. So in a way, again, no disrespect to uh, the governments and the civic governments that really are trying, but it's a real challenge. And, um, you know, there is some talk about improvements in waiting times now for mm. permitting. Um, however, again, we have to look at the full picture. The amount of permit requests, say, in the city of Vancouver is down by more than 20%. So while there may be some improvements in timing, it's with a backdrop of less permits because less is being done, principally because of the interest rates slowing yeah. down demand for permitting. Tony, just very quickly, we've only got a few seconds here. I just want to take yeah. one last look at that graph, uh, the main graph that, that you had um, from the Altus Group data, because I, I just want you to tell us about the lag here. So we're, you know, there's there's a peak of land sales back in sort of 2016, 2017. 2017. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's what's coming to market at this point, Tony? Uh, to a large extent, that is was, is getting here to market. And I just have to quickly point out, many of the ex inclusionary style, like residential at a little below market rent, rental within a, a multifamily building, that's coming online now. Some really good programs, uh, in our case, in the city of Vancouver. And much of that that we're seeing today either come out of the ground or being finished is a result of that land sales bulge as you referenced uh, five yeah. years ago. 